Who's got the best beer garden? What's the dog friendliest bar? Where can you get the best live music? This year, you get to vote on the What's Brewing Guzzly Awards. Hey, I've been drinking in the Philly area all my life. This season, I'm gonna share Joe Six Pack's Essential Joints. From Tasker's Beer Barn and Route 422 in Exeter Township, he's Joe Six Pack, I'm Glenn Mack now. It's an all new season of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conshohockenbrewing.com. Hey, welcome to an all new season of What's Brewing. It's my pal Joe Sixpack. <laughs> I'm Glenn Mack. Now, we're at one of our favorite places, Tasker's Beer Barn, Route 422, Exeter Township. They have every beer that you might ever want in your life. It's a great place. Make sure that you stop by here and get all your needs for the fall. So, Joe Sixpack, nice to see you again. Great to see you. Uh, and we start, as always, with our beer swap. What do you got today? Okay, so uh, I thought we would drink IPAs today, even though I'm, I'm famously uh, tired of them, I guess. But I figured it's time to revisit it because we last season we tried to do everything we could to not drink. Yeah, well, you, I'm more of an IPA know, guy than you. But go ahead. So. I brought you one that's a really good one locally from the Wissahickon uh, Brewing Devil's Pool. This baby won the bronze medal for Imperial IPA at the last year's World Beer Cup, which is a pretty, pretty big deal. Right. Um, you know, up it's probably one of the heaviestly uh, populated categories out there. It looks like a big, uh, you know, it's clear, so it's probably yeah, a West Coast variety. Uh, what I was expecting. What, what's the IBV on this thing? Uh, it's a mere nine percent alcohol, so <laughs> okay. that's pretty natural. Hey, here's for to it. you, pal. Cheers. New season. All right, does not, this does not look like a heavy IPA. Let's see how it drinks. It drinks pretty easy too, to be honest with you, although there's a lot of uh, good hops Ooh. in there. You know what? It starts easy. Right. And then you realize <laughs> after you swallow, like, oh, there's something to this thing. This is, I've been uh, hanging out at Wissahickon's Beer Garden uh, this past summer, and it's a real lot of fun down there, and uh, I was really happy to see them win an award for this, uh, for, for an IPA that's, uh, you know, it's, can stand right up there with the rest of them. All right, so here's what I got for you. This, my friend, is from our pals at Yards. This is the Yards Tectonic. It's got my favorite word in it, hazy. Hazy, yeah, yeah. Uh, hazy IPA, aromatic. It's a double, this also 9% alcohol. Boy, what, we're starting the new season with the hefty stuff. We didn't even like work our way into this slowly, did we? This one actually goes down a little bit less bitter. It's, uh, I guess that's the nature of a hazy beer. It has that Ooh, big like hot flavor, but it's, Ooh, doesn't, it's not hello. bitter at all. I like this. I don't know how much they're going to make this, if it's a one-off or what, but I like it a lot. That's a great question, Glenn, because, you know, uh, Yards, we, we're very familiar with their variety of beers, but they, like many other breweries, have been switching into uh, IPAs, different varieties yep. of India Pale Ale out there, uh, which seems to be a huge trend, has been a huge trend in brewing. Right, and the trend's going nowhere. You know, we talk about how stuff kind of cycles in and out and becomes popular. IPAs are not going anywhere. I read a piece recently that Sierra Nevada, right, one of the iconic craft brewing places, has pretty much entirely gone over to IPAs, which is not where they started. They have four core brands. One is a pale ale, three are IPAs. Yeah, uh, what happened there? No, they were known for stout and porter. They made a really nice wheat beer, uh, barley wine. And, and yeah, you go to the store now, uh, if you look through their aisles here at Tasker's uh, Beer Barn, you'd see that it's the IPA's dominant. Okay, so again, it's my favorite style. I'm okay with it. Not so much for you. What do you think, other than the fact that people like them, which is the obvious answer, why do you think it's persistent? Well, I think part of it, and bear me out on this one here, is due to the pandemic. Okay. <laughs> we blame everything on yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, I will. Now. I will. I think that what's happened is that a lot of people, the, the, the IPA thing is going to happen no matter what. People like the flavor and so on. But 
during the pandemic, people switched from going to beer bars where they could go and get a variety of beers on tap to beer stores uh, to pick up their beers. And beer stores are going to serve their public, they serve their customers, but they have limited shelf space. Mm. So they're going to give their shelf space to the flavors that people really want. Hey, so play I play the greatest hits. Exactly. And so you go into a beer store, I would say, venture to say, 60 to 70 percent at least of the craft beer is, is going to be an IPA, even maybe more. And by the way, it's one place, and one reason a place like Tasker's is so great, they are so large that they have everything, but a smaller store will be feeling that Absolutely, more. Yeah. All right, so this is a hazy, this is not. Hazy kind of dominates now. Are other styles getting pushed out? The West Coast getting pushed out? Yeah, it's out kind of weird. I mean, you and I have been doing the show and before that the podcast, and we've been seeing this evolution of IPAs for years now. Uh, and we've seen over the years white IPA, rye IPA. Remember, yeah. like for a, a moment, there was uh, something called Brute, Brute IPA? Yeah, that didn't last. Yeah, it came yeah. and went. Because we did it, a show on how this is the next trend. <laughs> and by the week's show following, it was gone. <laughs> exactly. So I think right now what I see are the uh, big West Coast IPAs, double IPAs, the hazy IPAs, and to some extent, milkshake IPAs, which are the flavored, sort of lactose-flavored uh, beers that are fruity and so on. Yeah. And uh, those are the three that seem to be dominating the IPA market right now, and the shells, too. We'll have to do something on those lactose ones coming up in an upcoming episode. Is it generational? Well, I think, in, at least for the lactose IPAs, I think it is. I think there's evidence that younger people like a sweeter beer. They don't like the harshness of the hops. Uh, and I think that that's, that's where that came from. A double IPA, I love it. I love bitter beers. So. Yeah. Okay, and I ask you this question every year. Is there, what's the next thing? Is there <laughs> something making inroads that, like, will be the next trend? Other than, God forbid, we're done with, like, the vodka-flavored nonsense and all that, uh, right? I hope. I, yeah. I've seen a, this past year I saw a lot more uh, lagers out there and especially pilsners. I've been seeing people play around with pilsners, different varieties. I've seen, uh, you know, German pilsner, Czech pilsner. I've even seen New Zealand pilsner. So, Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I would do that. Can I get one in New Zealand? That would be <laughs> yeah. extra fun. Uh, he's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about some kind of news that's developed since we last saw you, including New Jersey just getting tougher and tougher on the people making you great beer. We're at Tasker's Beer Barn, Route 422, Exeter Township. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. Now, what's brewing? You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Macnow. Follow him on beer underscore radar on Twitter. I am at Real Glenn Macnow, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that. Wherever you find the, the cool kids, that's where I'm hanging out. Uh, and we are here at Tasker's Beer Burner, as I said, Route 422, Exeter Township. Drinking some single cup beers out of New York, which both of us like a lot. What is yours called? Uh, this is called a frequency lager, a nice clean lager. One of my favorite things about coming here is you could say to the folks running the store, hey, could you get me a cold beer? <laughs> you and never know will. what they're going to come out. Mine is called, gosh, this is small type, Somewhere I Can Walk Alone Country Lager. There you go, 5.3. Okay. okay. Uh, here's the thing. If I, oh, that's nice. If I was enjoying this over in New Jersey at a brewery where they make it, the problem is I could enjoy the beer, but I probably couldn't enjoy music or food or ambience or TV or anything else because they got all these crazy rules over there. Exactly. This is the famous Jersey uh, brewery rules. Uh, before you could even enjoy it, you'd have to go take a tour of the brewery and right. see the uh, intricate workings of the mash tun or whatever. Uh, That's what I want to do. It's crazy. This has been an issue in New Jersey for years now uh, where they've came up with licensing rules that are designed to keep them from competing with liquor license holders. Okay. And I understand somebody pays, I don't know which pay for liquor, liquor license, many, many, many thousands of right. dollars. So you want to be protective of that. I understand from that perspective, but they have to find 
in my thinking, a better way of doing it than just punishing the people who own or the people who want to visit these brew pubs. Tell, give me a couple of the yeah, more really egregious well, rules. I that mentioned you see. the the, uh, the the tour and also the food is a big thing. You cannot serve food beyond, say, uh, packages of nuts or something like that. Okay, they used to have food trucks. No more food trucks. You can have they can have food trucks that just coincidentally park out in front, but you cannot <laughs> organize a food <laughs> truck. No, is that right? Yeah, yeah. At one point, they wouldn't even let Seems you have a loophole to me. Exactly, they wouldn't even let you have menus from like local pizza places at one point, but they dip in on that. No mixed drinks. Uh, you, they have to have no more than 25 special events per year. Now, so you think, okay, okay, 25 beer festivals, that sounds an awful lot. No, a special event can be something like, hey, guys, we're posting on Facebook that we are going to put the Eagles game on this right. afternoon. That's an event. That's a big thing. So, well, wait, if they don't post it, put, put it on, that's okay. But if they again, post it. Again, just coincidence if it happens to be right, on. But again, they want to bring in a crowd, so they want to advertise that they have this big screen TV, right, can they have right. a big screen TV? I think it might have a limit on the number of inches. Oh, get <laughs> out of here, is that right? Oh, this is crazy. It, it's insane, but you know, the thing is that the, these rules completely stomp on is that small breweries are community assets. People do want to gather there, and, and yet they're doing everything they can make it to make it as uncomfortable as possible. Well, I think that's a great point. So a place like Flying Fish is gonna be fine, right? Whatever they do, they sell enough beer outside of the brewery that they're gonna be fine. The small guy who's trying to build something up and makes more money selling one of these inside his brewery than, than he can, maybe can't afford to Precisely. Can and, and especially now that we're coming out of the pandemic, they need the people in there because they've been sort of just scraping along you know, in the last two or three years here trying to make a living. And now that, you know, things are opening up, especially now we're going to be turning to cooler weather, they want to get people into these places. And New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, is doing everything it can to stop them. I always thought of New Jersey as a progressive place. Come on, Governor Murphy, get on this damn thing. Really, absolutely. All right, uh, some other news since we've seen you last, which is some, some beers we thought were gone may be coming back, including one of the classics, although kind of sort of yeah, stouts, right? Yeah, like Return of the Living Dead or something yeah. <laughs> here. We've, we've seen two breweries in, uh, in recent months uh, make big comebacks. One is uh, Prism Brewing out in Lansdale, uh, has resurrected uh, at least some of its brands. They are brewing their beer, actually, they didn't come back with their own brewery. They're brewing it at that Cohops Cannery in Hatfield, oh, we which visited. we visited yeah, last season. Yeah, that was a very good place. So they're bringing that brand yeah. back. I think right now all they have is their Felony IPA and Shady Blonde. Maybe they'll bring That's Red Zone good. back. They, they were, to me, they used to get too involved in like too many esoteric, there crazy. There was some crazy flavors pizza, there. Pizza, cranberry, beer, and yeah. all, you know, like, come on now. So we'll see what they come back on their second life. Okay. The bigger one actually is Stouts Brewing, which uh, we did an entire special about them uh, closing up. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, the family was getting out of the beer business out there in Adamstown. Well, uh, they've now uh, work working with Evil Genius in uh, Fishtown to rebring their beers back. Carol Stout's involved with some of the marketing and so on. Uh, is it their beer or is it their name? Well, I think probably. I think it's closer to more of their name than anything. Okay. Um, they're using their recipes, they're, but they're not using their old equipment, obviously. Right. They're brewing it uh, at a different brewery. Uh, we'll see what the yeah. flavors are. It'll they're nice just to, starting to come out as we nice tape this. they have the so. name around, but it may not be the same. And finally, and this one, as we're recording this at least, it seems like things are not going well at Weyerbach. Yeah, this one hurts because I thought that they were coming, emerging out of bankruptcy once uh, a couple years ago. They were uh, bringing back some of their brands, but uh, it just seems like they've, they've stumbled again. Uh, they're back into bankruptcy. Uh, they closed their tasting room. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I have to be honest with you. In the past year, I don't really see their beer out in bottles or taps very much in the, in the Philadelphia region. I miss the Merry Monks, my friend. Yeah, that's about all you would ever find. They, they used to make, you know, eight, ten different great yeah. styles of beer that were out there. Yeah, I mean, they're one of the originals. They have a big footprint. I, I, I would feel bad if, if it doesn't work out for them. So we root for everybody in the business. Right. Weyerbacher, here's for you. We hope to see you back on the shelves. All right, coming up, this is a very interesting thing. Joe Sixpack has spent his entire life recklessly drinking beer day and night, but 
there's an upside because <laughs> he's been everywhere. He's seen everything. And we're going to do a weekly series on the Joe Sixpack Essentials, neighborhood by neighborhood. What are the places that you really have to try? That plus our Guzzly Awards coming up next. We're at Tasker's Beer Barn, Route 422, Exeter Township, surrounded by beer on What's Brewing. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. I want to see a show. I want to play. I want to eat. Like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Glenn Mack now here with Andrew Colligan, beer genius from Kachak and Brewing Company. Andrew, let's run down some of our core beers with some exciting new looks. Start with Type A. Our number one selling beer. Big citrus hop notes. Type A is our classic American IPA. Life Coach Hazy IPA. Hazy, bright, and juicy. The perfect beer for all day, every day. Puddler's Row. Uh, maybe the best thing to sell in the country. Back-to-back -back silver medals at the World Beer Cup. Backpack beer. Uh, the newest addition to our year-round lineup. Citrus and spicy with a refreshingly clean finish. Pack a few and enjoy the view. And everybody loves Ring the Bell. My go-to. Smooth, easy drinking lager that's perfect before, during, or after the game. This one's out of here. Oof. Thank you, Harry. All exciting choices. Enjoy them all and a whole lot more at all of our Conchahawk and Brewing Company locations. and wherever beer is sold. Hey, welcome back to West Brewing. We're at Tasker's Beer Barn in Exeter. I'm a joint, well, I own product at Conchahawk and Brewing Company. Lost City Hazy IPA. I've not had that one hot. yet. Oh, well, to have it at the after, after the show. We'll just split that one. There you go. Joe Sixpack, Len Mack now. Uh, as I said, going into the break, one of the great things about working with this guy is he has grown up here his entire life. He's been drinking beer since he was five. He knows <laughs> every place there is to know. So we've got our weekly segment, Joe Sixpack Essentials. What neighborhood we go to first? Okay, we're going to talk down the shore. Oh, good. Uh, still, still lots of time to get down there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Glenn, it used to be you go down to the shore, you had Ton Tavern for craft beer. Mm -hmm okay beer mm -hmm. and then a lot of Miller Lite and that was it you know yeah. and you know I understand that it's hot you want to sit on the beach with something light but nowadays there's a lot of really great breweries down at the shore and I wanted to focus on two of them in a bar the, the first place is Slack Tide yeah uh, oh, we did we were down there boy that was a nice place. down in Cape May County yeah. uh, I, I would tell people that when you go there, you could go there for a lot of reasons, a lot of different beers, but the one beer that I really enjoy there is the Bellboy Blonde, uh, Belgian Blonde. This is a really great classic beer, so it's worth the trip just for just that for beer. That. Okay. Uh, you so know what I like there? I like their swag. They have like really good logo. I collect these. They hats. do. And yeah. they're opening up next year uh, a new location right across the street, so it's going to be a bigger beer garden nice. and uh, a lot more fun to good, go there. I like Slack Tide. What else? Yeah. Well, no surprise, Ship Bottom Brewing yeah. in uh, uh, Beach Haven. I mean, we're fond of the show, not just because you know they've been a big supporter of what's brewing over the years, but I think they do a lot of fun stuff, and that's what the shore should be. It should be a fun beer drinking place. You don't have to be serious about your beer, although they do make serious big beers. May I just suggest, as the weather turns cooler, their Mexican Stout is Absolutely. one of my favorite beers to have when it's under 50 degrees. Absolutely. You know, they're not afraid to play with some of their flavors down there. So you'll see a beer like a, a, a coconut key lime pale ale, uh, the blueberry wheat. I'm into those. I like them for one, one and done, so, but they're okay. fun. You know, yeah, you get a flight. Yeah, and it's like, yeah absolutely. Okay, I got four ounces of this. Like, okay, that was fun. Right. I'm with you. All okay. right. And to my, for my money, the single best beer bar down the shore ooh, ooh, ooh. is Vagabond AC. Uh, Never been. In Atlantic City, right as you come in on the west side, uh, it's one of those, it's mainly filled with locals or people that have been going down to shore all their life, it seems like. Uh, great for snacks, really good barbecue. Uh, the thing that I like about it is it, when the beer menu is very heavy on Philly and Jersey beers. Nice. So you can get a good taste of what's local. All right, so let's review one more time. Joe Sixpack's Essentials at the Shore. What are the three places? Slack Tide. Yeah, great. 
Ship bottom. Love them. Vagabond AC. Got to try it. Okay, good stuff. Really good. And every week, you're going to give us a review of a whole new part of town. That's correct? right. That's right. Yeah, we we'll get a little bit of taste of my experience, I guess. <laughs> Glad this finally Since pays I was off. five? <laughs> right. Since I'm glad this finally pays off for you. Okay. We are starting a new, a new feature this year to get you involved, and we're calling it the Guzzly Awards, because why not? And what we want to do <laughs> is we want to recognize various places that make the local scene better, more vibrant, more fun. Um, and, I mean, not just the best beer. We've enjoyed doing our brew downs. This year, we want to kind of look at different aspects of it, different things that make place is great. So the first one we decided to do this week, while there's still time to be outdoors, is what place has the best beer garden? We got a ton of nominations. I put it on social media. We got 30, 40 different places. I'll tell you some of the runners up, okay? Uh, Eclipse in Merchantville, Love City, Core 3 in Clayton, New Jersey. Never been. Uh, Root Down, uh, they, by the way, they said make great ribs. Independence Beer Garden, uh, Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall and AC, Victory Beer Garden at Longwood Gardens. I have been there. That's actually a really good place. Constitution Yards Beer Garden, Frankfurt Hall. Uh, that may do it. Ludwig's, and this is a new place, Levante Ludwig's Corner Horse Show, Horse Show Grounds in Glenmore. I don't know that place, but I want to get there. But after all of that, we kind of weeded it down to the four places we're going to ask you to vote, and what do you got? Right, we're going to ask you to vote on Twitter. Uh, right after the show, you can start voting. So uh, the four places we want you to vote for, for the uh, first ever What's Brewing Guzzlies in the Beer Garden By the category. Way, it's a phenomenal name. It is, it is. <laughs> the Luscious Beer Garden, as I called it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, Ship Bottom at Lynn Villa Orchards. Whoa. Oh, we've been there. That's Absolutely. A, that is a great place. Uh, Warwick Farm in Bucks County. Yeah, love it. Great brewery. Out Rolling in the Hills. Cu suburban countryside there. Yeah. In town, and in Germantown, Attic Brewery in Germantown. Fine place. And finally, the Creamery at Kennett Square. Uh, four really terrific outdoor places. You can really enjoy yourself. You tell us which is your favorite, and they will, the winner will get the... Award. The coveted Guzzly yes. Award, which we're not quite sure yet what we're going to do with that, but Depends we have producers <laughs> who are they're going to spend a lot of money producing something really nice and sending it out to these places. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk to the fine people at Taskers here. Uh, talk a little bit about the best looking beer cans because you know what? Sometimes you buy something just on the side of it. All right, he's just sick back. I'm Glenn Mack now. It's What's Brewing. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. Thank you. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat, like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack, now joined by Lisa Tasker, the brains hey. behind Tasker's yeah. Beer Barn in Exeter Township. That's what you told yeah, me. Yeah, that would be my husband. As and we walk around this place, there are more than 500 beers on all the various shelves. So we decided let's just each find a label that really appealed to us, something I, I might walk by and buy. And I love this one because it is basically, it's a label of hops. This is from the... Evergreen Brewing Company, Imaginary Friend, Camp Hill, PA. I would try this thing. Uh, Lisa, just show me a label you loved. I, I love this label. I think it looks um, very appetizing, and it's called Lancaster Baked. I like and it. And I think we should try it. A pumpkin. You know what? You open it, I'll drink it. All right. Okay. There you go. All right. I, I always thought there was a little bit of a druggy thing going on with baked. With uh, baked, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it is a really good pumpkin beer. Yep. 
Okay. And we are in the season, so yeah. I'm good for that. Absolutely. Joe Sixpack, what do you find? Well, the one that jumped off by <laughs> me was not a good looking label. It's the opposite. It might be the ugliest label I've ever seen. This is Thin Man Brewing Give Trial this, yeah, go ahead. That's by Wombat. Oh, uh, that's scary. That not sc it's not only scary, it's as ugly as can be. Yeah. Uh, and I picked it out off the shelves, and the folks here told me that uh, you think this is bad, you ought to see their double die hop version, which is even more disgusting. So this is, I mean, that is an ugly label. That's an ugly label. Okay. Uh, we also said, Lisa, yep. what's the strongest beer here? That would be Oddside. It's Delirious, 16, or I'm delirious. sorry, fourth. Delirious. delirious would appear to be a good name for that. After, yeah. 14.6%. And it is a stout. Who drinks a 14.6% oh, no, stout I, I out, of I, Someone okay, out of a can? Okay, that's true. Out of a can is kind of weird, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, did, I guess you got to decant that into like two or three different glasses right. or so. Did, well, I was did you want to try it? Uh, no, I think, you know, we're professionals here, but we, we, we can't really push it that far. <laughs> He's driving me home, <laughs> okay. so let's leave him off of that. Okay, then yeah. we said to you, Find us a beer that you think we've never had that we would like. I think you would probably like the Split Face. Um, the unique Snacks is actually oh, yeah. in Reading, and so is Chatty Monks, and they're a nice local company. Oh, and nice it's little really collaboration good. here, a lager with split pretzels. I you think know I what? would probably like that. I uh, think that one's going home with okay. me, so I'll let you know how there I like it. There you go. All right. I and, was right. And finally, Lisa, yeah. find us something that you think we wouldn't like. That I would like and you wouldn't like? Yeah, okay. Okay, how about this? No, come on now. <laughs> okay. She's, she's a Miller Lite fan. <laughs> you know what? Everything has its place. Oh, no, no, no. Bush Light Apple? Let me put it this way. The Miller Lite, there have been occasions where I might have that. Bush Light Apple ain't happening. You got something else? Oh, but it's so nice and cold. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, what yeah. About well, how about this? This is... Uh, this is Rusty Rail, and it's a Mutiny and Regret, I think. Mutiny and Regret does not sound like I would like it. Rum Barrel Aged Ale with Ginger. Joe Sixpack, let's give it a shot. All right, let's All right. see. I don't it think we would like scary, it. Yeah, uh, let's, with let's, the let's ginger in there. Yeah, I'm not a fan of ginger. All right, but I understand this I like is a actually... ginger beer. Uh, I've had a ginger beer before. This is a, a fan favorite here. The locals come in here and, and really do like this beer, okay. I'm told. So, right. You uh, do sell a lot of this, eh? We're going to see yep. what goes right. with this. This is Rusty Rail up in upstate Pennsylvania. Okay. If I've had their we stuff. Have, we, uh, there we, we go. Actually Here's have to had their stuff on our show. Okay. There we go. There you have it. Let's go. I smell a lot of ginger. A lot of ginger. Oh. It smells like you drank your mother's perfume bottle. Oh, wow, gosh almighty. Wow, that's got I a lot of... You know what? I mean, I... I yeah. I go back to the pumpkin. Color. That was pretty drink good. Half a glass of it. It's not yeah. as bad as Glenn says it's it is. Pretty bad. It's different. <laughs> Let me put it this way. It is, and I don't like ginger beers. Many but... tremendous things here at uh, Tasker's Beer Barn. That was not among them, but Lisa, thank you so much for your hospitality. Absolutely. We're coming back next week. Okay. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. Now, thanks for watching. What's brewing? What's brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conshohockenbrewing.com.